Salam alaikum. Thank you, uh, thank you, Kathy, for the kind introduction. Uh, good afternoon. Very pleased to have the opportunity to uh, to speak with you all this afternoon. As Kathy indicated, I'm going to talk to you about a research project that uh, my institute recently completed, uh, but with very active and essential support from uh, uh, Dr. Kathy, her organization, and other Muslim and non-Muslim organizations uh, across the country. <coughs> and I'll apologize right now for the cough. I'm at the back end of a cold, and uh, the cough is what's left. I want to start with some background about uh, the research, just to give you the proper context. As Kathy indicated uh, back in 2006, um, we, uh, we did a survey of Muslims in Canada. The impetus for this was uh, research done by the US-based Pew Research Center, uh, with, uh, uh, doing research with Muslims and non-Muslims in a number of countries. Um, they didn't include Canada in, uh, in their research. Initially, we were very disappointed that Canada was not included in this important research, and then we got inspired to fill this gap. So we conducted our own Canadian version of this same research uh, to fill the gap and also to look at the distinctive Canadian experience of Muslims in this country. And we partnered with the CBC so that we would have uh, media opportunity for media exposure once we were done. Why we did such a survey, I think, is, uh, will be pretty obvious to most of you. Uh, Muslims are one of the fastest growing parts of the population in Canada. Uh, there are lots of issues and controversy uh, uh, about uh, Muslims in this country, certainly many challenges your community faces, um, and uh, those aren't, uh, uh, dis this is despite the fact that we live in a multicultural and supposedly diverse society. And there really has not been any systematic opinion research with Muslims in this country, so that's something that we wanted to address. Just to show you the population statistics, if you're interested, this, uh, this slide shows the growth in the Muslim population in Canada going back uh, quite a few decades. Uh, in 2011, there were well over a million Muslims living in this country. By the end of the 2016 census, which is now underway, we expect the number will probably be somewhere over 1.5 million out of a population of 36 or 37. So very significant and growing. We often get asked the question, <clears throat> why a survey? What can a survey actually do to be constructive and help address some of the issues facing your community? <coughs> well, we're researchers, so of course we think research is uh, valuable, but uh, beyond that, we think that survey research actually could be a fairly uh, powerful vehicle or tool to amplify the voices of individuals in any part of society, particularly those that may be marginalized or not well understood. Um, and in a way help maybe address some of the stereotypes which unfortunately are out there. And when properly conducted, surveys provide credible evidence uh, about social realities that will get accepted uh, and be much more uh, valid, so to speak, than uh, anecdotes, which is often what drives people's opinions and uh, prejudices. When you do a survey of a population uh, uh, of, of Muslims or other groups, uh, you can understand how there are similarities or differences across the different parts of the population and not run to the, rush to the assumption that what may be true of many Muslims may or may not be true of all Muslims. So that's an important uh, uh, value. And finally, uh, it's a fact that um, surveys attract attention and media profile and coverage. And so it's a way in which to get uh, messages and a positive narrative out into the world, into public discussion, in a way that other ways cannot, uh, other things will not do. And our survey did have an impact. Uh, in February 2007, 2007, CBC ran major stories on our 2006 survey and TV, radio, and the internet. It happened to coincide with the launch of Little Mosque on the Prairie, completely coincidental. Uh, but the messages of the TV show and the messages of the survey were largely the same, uh, and they reinforced one another. And we were pleased uh, that the survey was well received by the Muslim community. Uh, they, most people we talked to felt that it was constructive, and the work has been cited and used by academics and governments and others, understanding that the Muslim community is not simply the stereotype that is sometimes uh, presented. So that brings us to our current survey. <coughs> Excuse me. This time, 
we partnered with a number of other organizations to do the research, Muslim and non-Muslim, including the Teslit Institute, the Olive Tree Foundation, the InSpirit Foundation, the Canadian Race Relations Foundation, and Think for Actions, which is a, a Calgary-based uh, group. So we worked on this survey collectively. This is a joint project of the six organizations. And we did the partnership for three reasons. It strengthens the research, so we have the perspectives of these different organizations to help strengthen the questions and the focus, helped us secure the funds necessary to do the research, and it also helps ensure that once we're done with the study, that the results will be published and used by others, not just ourselves. The themes that we covered uh, in this uh, study are on the slide. Uh, you can see that there are a number of themes that were in the survey. I don't have time today to cover all of these themes. Uh, I will cover some of them. And uh, there is a full report that Kathy, as Kathy indicated, that's available uh, at no cost on our website, and I would encourage you to have a look. And for those of you who might be interested in the research and how it was done, there were actually two surveys as part of this project. There was a survey of Muslims across Canada, a sample of 600, conducted at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016, excuse me, interviews in English, French, Urdu, and Arabic, uh, results uh, accurate to plus or minus four percentage points. There was some additional research with Muslim youth that I'm not going to talk about today that uh, also adds to the picture. But as we did in 2006, we also did a complementary survey of the non-Muslim population because we wanted to understand the perspectives of the rest of Canadian society towards Islam and Muslims. So we conducted that as well. Um, <clears throat> in both cases, the methodology was the same methodology we used in 2006, so we could make direct comparisons. So what did we find? <coughs> Excuse me. Let me start with the theme of personal connection to Canada. And why is this a relevant theme? Why did we pick this for our survey? Well, roughly 70% of the Muslims in Canada are immigrants, so they have been born in another country. And a majority of immigrants have come to this country in the last 10 years. So in many respects, the story of Muslims in Canada is a story of immigrants and newcomers. So connection to country is something that uh, would be of interest. <coughs> One of the findings that got the greatest media coverage when the survey was released about three weeks ago was the extent to which Muslims are proud to be Canadian. And uh, so you may, <clears throat> you may have heard about this. If you look at the results on the slide, uh, you can see that a very large majority, 83% of Muslims that we surveyed said they're very proud to be Canadian. And that has increased about 10 points from 10 years ago. <clears throat> so that's, that's a very strong finding in terms of the proportion who say they're very proud. If you look at the results across region, you can see that the increase has been across the country, but interesting, most dramatic in Quebec, where pride among Muslims in Quebec has really skyrocketed. What about non-Muslims on this question? Well, the results are similar, but not quite the same. About three quarters of non-Muslim Canadians are very proud to be Canadian, <clears throat> but they're now trailing Muslims by about 10 points. So this is an interesting uh, uh, difference, and one that probably most non-Muslims uh, would not imagine. Why are Muslims proud to be Canadian? <coughs> this is an open-ended question where we didn't give people answers, they had to tell us. And uh, you can see the reasons, if you can read the slide, uh, that this is a free country, a democracy, multiculturalism, that's uh, uh, a peaceful, stable country, humanitarian, friendly people. These are the kinds of reasons that people give. What's notable here is that these are the same reasons that other kinds of Canadians give as well. So there's really no difference uh, in the views of what makes this a country to be proud, in, proud of. What do Muslims like least about being in Canada? Uh, <clears throat> maybe not surprisingly, it's climate or the weather. <clears throat> we found this result in 2006, and Muslims are even more likely today to say that's the thing they like the least. And I guess the weather has become a little less predictable than uh, it was before. But I also want to point to the bottom of the slide, and there are about a quarter of Muslims who basically can't think of anything that they particularly dislike about being in this country. So that's quite striking as well. <clears throat> and similar to pride in country is the sense of belonging that people have to being part of this country. 
A clear majority uh, of Muslims say they have a very strong sense of belonging to this country. Uh, very few say it's weak. And when we ask them, uh, has your sense of belonging changed over the past five years, most say that their, their sense of belonging has actually strengthened uh, in the past five years. And very few say that it has weakened. So that, uh, that shows, I think, a very uh, positive and striking uh, 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 result. And, more, and beyond that, satisfaction with the overall direction of the country, uh, generally speaking, uh, Muslims are very upbeat. Uh, almost nine in 10 say that overall, they're satisfied with the direction of the country today, a bit more than they were 10 years ago. Let's compare that with non-Muslims. So a majority say that they're satisfied with the direction of the country, but it's only 56%. It's just barely over half. So for the most part, Muslims are actually stand out as being among the most positive of, of Canadians in that respect. Some of this, no doubt, has to do with the outcome of the federal election in 2015. Our survey went into the field about a month after that, so clearly that may have made a difference. Participation in the recent federal election, uh, almost eight in 10 Muslims in our survey said that they voted in the election. I'm sure that's much higher than it was in the previous election, um, and that's a really striking figure. And not surprisingly, most people who voted, voted for the federal liberals. And it's probably not difficult to figure out why that might not be the case. So clearly that was a factor um, and uh, uh, something which uh, Muslims uh, participated civically in, uh, in what's happening. And here's a slide that I found a bit uh, uh, striking myself. 90% of the Muslims we surveyed were optimistic that the new federal government, led by Justin Trudeau, would result in a more positive relations between Muslims and non-Muslims. So clearly most of these people voted for the liberals, but it strikes, it's striking to me because I think that there may have been uh, much more skepticism or many more people saying, let's wait and see. But clearly this suggests that there's a lot of hope and expectation uh, about how things will go from here on out. And it will be interesting to revisit this question in a few years' time. <clears throat> let's turn to our uh, second theme, Muslim identity and practice. <coughs> we asked about different identities that people have. Uh, how important is it to be Muslim? How important is it to people's identity to be Canadian? Is that part of their identity? And to what extent is being a, a member of their ethnic or cultural group part of their identity? And what we can see from the research is that more than eight in 10 told us that being Muslim is very important to them and being Canadian is very important to them. So I think it helps uh, uh, reinforce the notion that uh, people today have multiple identities and they're not just one thing or another. We pushed the envelope on this a little bit farther and asked people who said both Mus being Muslim and Canadian were very important if one of them was more important than the other. Um, and among Muslims, about 50% of this group said Muslim, being Muslim was more important. The other 50% said, well, being Canadian, or both were equally important. Um, were, uh, uh, you know, so it sort of split 50-50. Um, if we compare this with non-Muslims who have a religious affiliation, we see results that are different but not that different. Um, a little more likely to say that being Canadian is very important, uh, but a quarter again say that both are equally important. So it does underscore the notion of multiple identities um, and that uh, uh, Muslims uh, are as likely to say that they're Canadian as Muslim. Given that many Muslim immigrants have come to this country, um, uh, which is largely a secularized environment for, for in a broad sense, we wanted to know, get a sense of whether people's attachment to their religion changed over time. And so we asked those who came from another country whether their attachment had changed. And for the most part, uh, the largest group said it hadn't changed, but a significant minority, 41%, said in fact that their attachment to, to Islam actually strengthened since they got here. And when you look at it by length of time in the country, you can see that uh, there isn't really a whole lot of change. And what it does suggest that, that coming from maybe a primarily Muslim country to Canada has not really weakened people's sense of attachment. And in fact, we may be seeing the reverse. There's evidence in our survey to suggest that the extent of religious observance uh, is actually strengthening a bit, or has over the past 10 years. 
In this slide, uh, we're showing the frequency of attending a mosque or community center for prayer. And you can see over to the left that the, the number of people who say they, they attend at least once a week is up higher than it was uh, uh, 10 years ago. Um, and actually, this trend is strongest among younger Muslims, which is interesting. And among women wearing head covering, uh, that in public, that has also increased noticeably over the past 10 years. Over half of the Muslim women that we spoke with said that they do wear a head covering of some sort in public, uh, primarily the hijab in most cases, and that's where the increase has happened, uh, but other types of head coverings as well. And again, this increase is most noticeable among younger Muslim women, as well as those with a college or, or university education. <clears throat> so we wanted to find out whether people's, uh, Muslims felt that the, uh, uh, the uh, religious attention of youth is, is growing weaker over time. Um, often a concern of parents is uh, what's happening to their children and grandchildren. Um, <clears throat> And so we asked this question and found that uh, uh, more likely than not, uh, uh, Muslims felt that the, the attachment of uh, youth was less, people were less religious than their parents by about a two to one margin, but a lot said they weren't sure or it really depended. Um, youth were a little bit more likely to hold this view, but not dramatically. What about sources of guidance as a Muslim? This is a question we asked in an open-ended format, so we could give people a chance to, to tell us in their own words. Uh, as you can see, that uh, people were most likely to talk about uh, their mosque or their local Muslim organization. Uh, as people mentioned family, their local imam or sheikh, uh, and then a number of other uh, uh, sources. But it is interesting that four in 10 of the Muslims we surveyed said none. They couldn't, they didn't or wouldn't point to a specific source of guidance as a Muslim. There's lots of interpretation we can put on these results and uh, I invite you to do, the, do so since I won't have much time today. The third topic is integration in Canadian society. Again, this is relevant because uh, most Muslims are immigrants and the fact that uh, Islam is a religion that is a, I guess, a minority religion in this country and very different from the sort of Christian uh, majority and the Christian foundations of this country. <coughs> One of the most widely uh, quoted uh, uh, results from our 2006 survey was the results of this question, um, which was asking Muslims whether they felt most people in their community wanted to adopt local Canadian customs and ways of life, or do they want to remain distinct in their own uh, communities and not blend so much. And what we see in 2006 and in 2016 as most Muslims are saying most Muslims want to be part of broader Canadian society and do not want to remain distinct. Um, this was actually a bit of a revelation to non-Muslims when they saw these results because that is not the general perception. When we put the same question to non-Muslims, excuse me, the answer was quite different. Non-Muslims tend to assume that Muslims want to remain distinct, remain in their own enclaves, not become part of broader Canadian society. Um, not because they know this or particularly informed, but this is just the perception that they have from the media or whatever. Thank you. <coughs> All right. <coughs> so there is this perception in the broader world that uh, Muslims do not want to be part of Canadian society. But I think the good news is, if you look at the results from 2006 and 2016, that they're less likely to think this than they were 10 years ago. So perhaps they, uh, they read our survey results in 2006. <clears throat> a different and perhaps more important way to look at the same issue is to ask uh, Muslims uh, and non-Muslims, what are the important values that immigrants should adopt when they come to this country? And here are the results. And again, this is an open-ended question. <laughs> I'm going to have lots of water by the end of this. Thank you. That's three, four glasses. No, three is enough. Thank you. <clears throat> I wish water was all I needed. <clears throat> this slide is very important <clears throat> because these are the responses of Muslims and non-Muslims to this question about important Canadian values for immigrants to adopt. And basically, they're saying the same thing. Fluency in language, 
tolerance, respect, respect for Canadian history, respect for the law, respect for religion. There's really very little difference in the views of Muslim immigrants coming and uh, uh, Canadians that have been here for, for uh, multiple generations. There's no difference in the views of the two groups. And I think this slide really says a lot. It does not mean that Muslims feel that uh, they should give up their religious identity or observances. Here's an example. Uh, a strong majority of Muslims believe that children, in, Muslim children in public schools should have right to, right to pray in those schools. And a, a smaller majority of non-Muslims support that as well. So that's, uh, I think that's important. <clears throat> in terms of the right to wear the niqab, uh, in, in uh, public services. There's the issue of citizenship ceremonies, which as you may remember was a political football in the last federal election. Strong majority of Muslims feel that Muslim women should be able to wear the niqab during the ceremony. Other Canadians are more divided, uh, particularly in Quebec. Um, <clears throat> when asked more generally about receiving public services, majorities of both Muslims and non-Muslims believe that women should be able to wear the niqab and receive public services. Time, okay. <coughs> Let me turn to another topic which uh, I think is, is quite clear that uh, one that's important to address and that's how Muslims are treated in broader society today. Start off with some positive results. Um, it's interesting, when we asked Muslims what they believed the mainstream opinion was of Islam, um, in 2006 and even more so in 2016, uh, Muslims felt that the opinion was more likely to be positive than negative. So there's a sense that most Canadians uh, have a positive impression of Islam, uh, although some clearly, uh, that doesn't mean everybody, but that's the general prevailing view. And you can see that that opinion, that perception has strengthened in the last 10 years. How do non-Muslims actually view Islam? Um, the results are not that different. Uh, a majority of, uh, of uh, non-Muslims, or at least a, a, a plurality, have a, favorable, have a favorable opinion of Islam, although we're not seeing progress over the last 10 years. So we have not seen uh, movement uh, necessarily. But I think uh, when uh, we, put, uh, we put this issue in comparative terms, uh, this slide I think is very clear. Most Muslims, well over eight and 10, believe that Muslims in Canada are treated better than Muslims in most other Western countries. And we can see that this opinion has strengthened in the last 10 years. So whatever challenges there may be here, uh, things are likely to be worse in Europe, North and the United States and so forth. There are concerns <clears throat> that people have, worries about different issues, <coughs> about how the media portrays Muslims, discrimination against Muslims, uh, issues about violent extremism and what it does in your community. Um, and it's interesting, unemployment among Muslims. Here we can see the trend of concern is much less than it was 10 years ago. But these are all issues of some concern. Of somewhat less concern is the influence of music, uh, uh, the internet on youth, the decline in the importance of religion among Canadian Muslims, and relatively few are worried about stereotyping by neighbors and coworkers. So media stereotyping, yes, but uh, stereotyping by people that they know, uh, much less so, which I think is a hopeful sign. When we asked a question about uh, the most important issue facing one's local Muslim community, uh, open-ended question, the results were quite clear. <coughs> that it's discrimination, unfair treatment, Islamophobia, um, even attacks on women wearing hijabs and so forth, that emerged as the issue that uh, Muslims are most likely to identify as a local issue compared to interaction among different uh, sects or uh, extremism or other sorts of things. What's more, uh, three in 10 uh, in this group did not identify any particular concerns. So some felt that everything was quite fine. We asked specifically about experiences with discrimination uh, in the last five years. Uh, for one reason or another, 35% of Muslims say in the last five years they have experienced unfair treatment or discrimination because of their religion, because of their ethnicity, 
because of their language or their sex. And you can see uh, <clears throat> how that breaks out. Those numbers to the right add up to more than 35% because people can mention more than one. Um, and those most likely to report these experiences, those born in Canada, women, those under 45 years of age, those living in Quebec, and those born in African countries. How does this compare with the general Canadian experience? We, when we can compare the results with uh, another survey, with the general social survey done a few years ago, we can see that uh, levels of discrimination are much lower, and Muslims basically are 50% more likely to experience discrimination than the population at large. Where do they ex experience discrimination? Uh, in the workplace, uh, jobs, universities, retail establishments, public transit, and so forth. These are the, the, the situations in which people said that they would experience unfair treatment of one sort or another. What about crossing borders, at airports primarily? <clears throat> about a quarter of Muslims say that they have experienced uh, being hassled or checked or unfairly considered in airport situations, not necessarily Canadian airports, but Canadian airports as well. And you can see from the slide that this doesn't really matter whether you're a man or a woman, how old you are, or country of birth. It's quite interesting that those born in Canada are more likely to experience difficult times at the border than those who are immigrants. This may have to do with expectations. Canadian-born Muslims may have expectations to be treated like everybody else, more so than perhaps immigrants. And what about feeling inhibited at, at one, point or another about, not one point or another about expressing one's opinion due to one's race or ethnicity or religion? 17% said they have felt this way, being in Canada. A little more likely if it's women, younger uh, Canadians, and those um, born in this country. So we can see a pattern here in terms of uh, who is feeling uh, most uh, affected. <clears throat> and then finally, what about the future? What about uh, the treatment of, of the next generation of Muslims? Will they face more discrimination, less discrimination? Um, <coughs> the results are somewhat mixed, uh, but a little more likely to feel that the next generation will, be, will experience more discrimination than less, uh, and others being somewhat uncertain. And when you look at this by age cohort, it's the youngest uh, uh, group of Muslims, 18 to 34, who in fact are most concerned or less optimistic about what's going to happen in the future. So, it looks like I will finish a bit early. Uh, I just want to wrap up with a few final points. Um, there's a lot in this research. I can't do justice to all of it here. Uh, there is a report and uh, there's more information available. Um, but let me just leave you with four points which I think are perhaps the most important. <coughs> I think what strikes me when I look at this, uh, at this study and, and what uh, uh, we can pull out of it is that Muslims as a group are notably positive about being in Canada, about what Canada stands for, and about the acceptance of their religion despite the reality and the experience of discrimination and stereotyping and Islamophobia that is, is clearly happening and continues to happen in this country. I think that's a really uh, a notable finding. I think it's a testament to your community. And to me, this is perhaps the most important thing I've, I've taken from this. And I think related to that is uh, Muslims, for the most part in this country, are as connected to the positive values associated with Canada and what it stands for and multiculturalism as any group uh, that we can see in this country. They are, in a sense, more Canadian than, than many other groups of Canadians, uh, including those that have, whose families have been here for hundreds of years. And I think it's notable that the extent to which religious identity among, the Muslim, among Muslims is enduring and actually growing stronger uh, over time. And I think this is a, a notable finding because uh, in the broader Canadian society, the trend is in the other direction. The general trend among most parts of, of Canadian society is towards becoming less religious and more secular, particularly among youth. So there's a real difference here, which uh, is important. 
And finally, and I've only touched on this briefly, Muslim youth are, like any generation, developing their own identity about who they are. But I think in this case, it's clear that, that Muslim youth are least, less satisfied with the status quo, particularly in terms of treatment of the community in this country, than older generations. And I suspect that uh, we're just starting to see the uh, sort of the impact of this, and those voices will start getting louder as we move on. And uh, with that, thank you very much.